Hi everybody, I'm Michael Dosh and welcome to the Firearms Training School. This is a video on proper pistol grip. Alright, so today we're going to talk about the proper pistol grip. First we want to start with an unloaded firearm. I visually and I physically check the chamber, the breech face, the magazine well. I look up and I repeat that process. Now we have an unloaded firearm. So the grip has evolved over the years since I started shooting in 1977. But as the grip has evolved, I've become a, a much better shooter, much more accurate and, and uh, better control of the firearm. As a general rule, we want to have our hands up high on the firearm and as far forward as we can. And we do that, of course, to control the recoil of the firearm and the muzzle clip. We know that when the gun goes off, firearm cycles, the energy wants to come backwards as the bullet goes forward, energy comes back, and also we have this muzzle clip. And in order to control that, we have to have a proper pistol grip. And this is going to be the same with every firearm that we shoot, whether it's the AR platforms, the shotguns, or the pistols. And if we could, we can't shoot like this, but if we could, we would actually contain the muzzle flip or the recoil by putting our hand over it, putting another hand behind it. We don't shoot like this. We can't shoot like that. But in any event, if we could force the gun out like this, if we could shoot the gun like this, the gun is not going to go anywhere. That would be a nice stable grip. For my strong hand, you'll notice that when I, when I do this, my uh, index finger is up along the slide. The, uh, it's up near the slide, certainly well above the trigger guard. You can see that there's a web uh, in between my thumb and my forefinger, and my skin is actually, my flesh is actually pushed up. And again, my, the, the muzzle is pointed at the target. My index finger is pointed at the target. My strong hand thumb is pointed at the target. You'll notice that we're left with this big open space. If you're watching this video at home, you can take your, your, uh, your support hand, in my case it's my left hand, and we all have this padding underneath our support hand thumb. Everyone's hands are shaped differently, and we have different, uh, different strengths, different thicknesses, but in any event, when we're holding the pistol with our right hand, we have this big web, excuse me, this big flesh part right here, we put that right in the open space. And from here, you'll notice that, again, the muzzle is pointed at the target, my index finger is pointed at the target, my left thumb, my right thumb, everything is pointed at the target. If I were to shoot one-handed, which we do oftentimes, the gun is not only gonna recoil, but also the muzzle flip wants to come up. But if we don't have anything containing the firearm on this side, it's also gonna twist up in this direction here. Same would be true if I shot in my left hand, the recoil is going to come back, muzzle flip is going to come up, because there's nothing on the right side of the gun, it's going to roll this way here. So getting back to our support hand, we indicated the fleshy part goes into this gap right here. Before we put our hand onto the firearm, I instruct my students to take their support hand thumb, drive it directly at the target. We drive it pointing directly at the target as though if, if this were the barrel of a firearm and bullets could fly out, you would have it right in the center of the target. My fingers are joined and are driven down toward, if we're looking at a target, there's a base at the bottom of the target, our fingers get driven down toward the, uh, down toward the deck. This is probably a 45 degree angle. We feel a little bit of stress down here. And the reason that we do that, once we lay the firearm onto the pistol, that helps us control the recoil. And I see a lot of shooters, their thumbs will be up and the hand will be, the fingers will be extended toward the target as opposed to down toward the deck. With the fingers extended toward the target, we have, we're essentially assisting the gun coming out. Whereas if you put a little torsion on it, a little torque on it, that'll hold the gun in place. It took me quite a while to realize the importance of, this, uh, of the support hand. On the left side of my hand, we have the, the knuckle starts right about here, and we have the bone that runs alongside the thumb. It took me a while to realize the value of this part of our support hand high up on the frame of the firearm. In fact, my support hand is so high up that when the gun is actually cycling and the slide's coming back, my thumb is actually up on the slide. 
And I can assure you, I've been doing this for a long time. It never interferes with the function of the firearm. It's never caused any injuries. You don't even feel it. But it took me quite a while to learn the value of having my left hand up that high. For you new shooters, I would encourage you at some point, while you get the firearm in your hand, to roll it over, muzzle stand pointed downrange at the target, and you can take a look at your left hand and make sure that your index finger comes up to the bottom of the trigger guard. I notice a lot of shooters, when they're shooting, their left hand will slide down off the frame of the firearm, and brand new shooters, I, I don't know why, but they seem to want to lazily let their thumb float around here. I can assure you, if it's, if it's any place other than pressed up against the side of the firearm, it is not engaged with the grip. Let's talk about grip pressure. Instructors will, will tell you that they promote either a 70-30, 60-40 uh, percent grip, which means that the left hand is offering 80 percent pressure or 70 percent pressure, and the balance of that pressure comes from their strong hand. The reason that they suggest this is so that when you're shooting, if you have too much pressure from your strong hand, too much pressure squeezing your fingers in like this, as you pull the trigger, it'll move the firearm. And I'll demonstrate with this empty magazine. Imagine if I'm holding the pistol like this, and um, if I have too much of a grip with my fingers pressed up against the firearm, as I pull my trigger finger, the other fingers want to get engaged. I heard one instructor describe it as, this is the rock star, and these are the roadies. And you only want the rock star involved in the show, meaning you only want the trigger finger to be pulling the trigger without disrupting the grip with your fingers. But oftentimes, the roadies want to get involved. And the secret to accurate shooting is by moving the trigger finger without disrupting the alignment of the firearm. So personally, and everybody's different, but personally, I have more of a 360 degree grip all the way around, even pressure all the way around. And the best shooters in the world uh, are not in 100% agreement on grip pressure. Some instructors or some uh, professional shooters will tell you that they, they really choke this thing like they're strangling it, whereas others will have a slightly more relaxed grip. The thing to do, and I encourage new shooters to do this, go to the range and try these different configurations. Try a 70-30 grip, a 60-40 grip, Try it like I do at a 360 degree pressure, evenly distributed around the firearm, and see what works for you. You can just look at the target to see how these things are going. In any event, grip is all about structure. Practice a good solid grip, it's gonna make you a better shooter. Thanks for listening, we'll see you at the range.